In this video, we're going to see how to use Access to search, uh, to query for data across multiple tables where those ta tables have been joined together. Join being another key operation with data. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is actually to import uh, another data table. We go to external data. My data is an ex in an Excel spreadsheet, so I select Excel. I need to browse to where it is. I just put it on my desktop. So if I scroll down, I should eventually fi find this spreadsheet called FDA Warning Letters Clinical Investigators. If I select that, I then get a di dialog box. So while my data is in sheet one of that spreadsheet, that's fine. Uh, so we can go next. Now this is important. Microsoft Access can use your column headings as field names for your table. Does the first row contain column headings? Well, yes, it does. So I need to click that. So I've now done that, and you'll see the field names have appeared at the top. That's good. We can go to Next. This Next dialog box allows us to check the data type. Uh, so text, um, that one is date time. Actually, I know because I've done this before that Access recognizes all of these correctly, so I don't need to worry too much about that. I can go through to Next, but you can select these when you import data. Now this bit uh, we mentioned in the first video. Um, I'm going to ask, ask Access to uh, add a primary key to my data. So it's going to add these ID numbers, so each row in the data has a has a primary key. If I had some unique identifiers in here, I could choose one of those fields to be the primary key. So for instance, if you had a list of doctors with their unique license numbers, you could use that as your primary key. But here, I'm going to let Access add it, click Next, and then I get the option to name my table. I'm going to keep it simple, call it FDA, and finish. And that should now have imported correctly. So let's open that table and take a look at it. Um, so this is data from the FDA on doctors who had received warning letters, basically in, over their conduct of clinical research. There have been some problems with their clinical research and they've received a warning letter about that. And what I want to do is to see if any of the doctors here were also paid by Pfizer to run their expert-led forums. Okay, uh, and this was something that was done in the uh, in the story we saw at the beginning of the first video. So what I want to do is join these two tables together, and I can do it in Access under Database Tools and Relationships. Now, the table Pfizer has already appeared. I need to show my FDA table as well. So click Show Table and Add. And now I have those two tables. Now I need to join them together in the right way. And the way we're going to do this is by the first name and the last name of the doctor. So I'm going to select First, which has just the first names in the Pfizer table. Click on that and drag it across to first name in the FDA table. This dialog box comes up. Um, I can just click create, create and it will create what's called an inner join. So when I query across these two tables, I'll only get the entries to match. But there are other join types which are explained in the, in the handout, in the worksheets. But I'm just going to go create here. And now you see those two are joined. Similarly with last name, take it over to last name here. Now, you'll be asked, do you want to edit the existing relationship? No, I don't want to edit the existing relationship. I want to create a new relationship. So I click No, do the same thing. And now the relationships look like that. I can save those relationships. And now I'm good to run my query. My 
So, to create and to design view for the queries. Now I need to add both tables. So let's add them, and there they are. Now here, when I want to run my query, I need to select the table because there are two of them. So let's first select uh, everything from the Pfizer table. And I'm going to select this option. I'm just going to take in all the fields. That's what the asterisk means. And I'm going to do the same thing for the FDA table. But I'm going to need to do one more thing, which is um, I need I only want the doctors who were paid to run expert-led forums. So I need that category, and I need the criteria like expert uh, asterisk. Now I'm going to uncheck that because I don't need to show it because it's going to turn up here anyway. Then I can run my query and I have a list of four doctors with how much they were paid. They're all running expert-led forums and they appear in both tables. Now this would not be the end of my reporting. I need to check that Thomas David Gazda in Scottsdale here is the same guy who's in the other table. Uh, so there's a lot of reporting to do. It turned out these were the same four guys and they are all mentioned in the story. So here's what the query would look like in, the, uh, in SQL if we'd done it that way rather than the point and click way I just showed you in Access. So it begins with a select statement as before we select everything from the Pfizer and FDA tables. So that's select Pfizer dot asterisk comma FDA dot asterisk. The from statement is the complicated part here because that has to define both the tables and how they're joined. So it's from FDA inner join Pfizer. That's the FDA table is joined to the Pfizer table. But how? That's where the next parts come in. On FDA dot last underscore name equals Pfizer dot last. That's the join on the last names. And FDA dot first underscore name equals Pfizer dot first. That's the join on the first names. And finally, we have our filter again. We only want to look at the uh, expert led forum payments where Pfizer dot category is like expert asterisk, and again, a semicolon to finish it all off.